a boom, which is yeah. amazing. And the rationale, and, and we've, you know what, I got to take credit. We've talked about this before Goldman did, by the way. Yes, we did. We've we talked, did. right? We've talked about, because what they did is everything, dude, everything we talked about, they were talking about because the vaccines are now being rolled out pretty aggressively mm -hmm. and you can, for older people who are getting it. So the right. ones who we're worried about, it seems like we're getting them covered and then, you know, trickling down to everybody else. The $1.9 trillion stimulus that's going to go in and inject a lot of money into the economy. Mm -hmm. um, and then also a lot of people, because they were stuck at home, they didn't spend a lot. So you have a lot of savings for not everybody, but you have a certain amount of people who are, you know, fortunate enough that they could work from home and they didn't really venture out and they didn't travel, they didn't go out to eat. So they accumulate the money. So they feel that there's going to be a huge pent up demand release. And when that happens, the economy is really going to grow. Yeah. Um, they also point to the last job report where it was like almost 400,000 people got new jobs. So they're saying, hey, this points to everything looking like it's gonna, it's gonna really rock and roll, that things yeah. are gonna really happen. Yeah, maybe we'll see some restoration of some industries that kind of took a big hit like the hotel. And exactly, stuff. yes. That could probably be the first place. It's, where exactly, because they pointed to that. They pointed to like in the last jobs report, the ones that really hired were like in the hotels and the restaurants, and the bars. And it shows yeah. once they loosened it up, they hired like crazy. So yeah. 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 And hopefully they'll uh, loosen up in, a, in the right way and be responsible and all that. Mm -hmm. But all in all, yeah, I think people are ready to travel and have saved their nickels yeah. and dimes to do so, especially the foreign travel. And I'm talking yeah. about the not, not the state to state or even just Europe, but people that it's going to Cancun is going to be pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? Uh, yeah. places like that are going to be pretty busy uh, in order for travel to happen. But at the same time, I wonder what the um, what some of the cities like that are dependent on travel or how they're going to feel like Jamaica's. Jamaica's a little bit different, I think, than Cancun as far as their uh, economy. And, and if they're going to take a little bit longer than some of the other cities, which may slow down, which will start to splinter people's interest where they once were planning to go to Jamaica or to Cancun, depending upon which one uh, is taking the big hit, uh, are they gonna go to other places and maybe we'll find out there. Yeah. Uh, so that could be very interesting discussion too on which of those uh, countries, because a lot of the nice cities have poor regions and a lot of the poor regions depended upon uh the visitors and the and the uh tourists and the, and yeah. the business you know for them to have to feed their economy uh so that will be very interesting to see how that you know what but that's a good problem to have where okay where are we going to go are we going to go here are we going to go there you know which right. direction these people so someone will benefit but I'm, I'm calling it now it's over pandemic's done we're done with it it's over we're past it. That's it. <laughs> no yeah. more. Well, I don't know if we're past it. Yep. I, I like to I like to see us go through the full wave, but I think we were talking about maybe September or somewhere in there. It's today. That's it. That's it. That's it. We'll start That's making it. travel plans. It's, yeah, I, I would get ahead of the crowd. Absolutely. But you know, people were always traveling. People, yeah. and people didn't stop completely travel. It, it wasn't in the droves that it was because I've seen yeah. pictures of friends who've been to yeah. other countries and been to other places and enjoyed themselves and had beaches to themselves and pools to themselves. Yeah. But not everybody wants that, I guess. But Yeah, I didn't travel at all. Yeah. I yeah, I just did the trip to see yeah. my son. Right? That was all. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty. That was it. That was yeah. all. Yeah, so what can we say right we uh uh you know we'll see how that bears I, i'll be interesting and interested in seeing how the uh the food industry see where it goes and see if it continues to innovate like it has been um there we're looking at some of the uh let's see how work at home will fare now being that if things open up if people how much of the workforce will continue to work at home. That would be an interesting watch to see. Um, it, you know what, got to meet you remember, Mark. How about this, you know what we should do? We should give a, a prediction, ask people for their predictions 
mm -hmm. what would happen and oh. then see how right how, how how closely people are on the mark or not you know oh. and then we can kind of as time goes on we could see is this panning out or not right right so those of you who are listening and viewing uh, you can yeah. put your prediction or we're going to open down in the thread and we'll be able to take a look at that over time and see and we'll we can we'll keep copy. it going and you know you can copy and paste the link to the uh, to this stream actually if you go to your right and look for the dots you can copy link and then post it uh somewhere where you can get back to it i use evernote um, I don't know what you guys use, but uh, that may be a good way for you to do that. But uh, yeah, so we'll talk about that. We'll keep our eyes and maybe that'd be something we can revisit mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. Um, let's go to something a little bit more that happened yesterday on Twitter. It was having a very interesting discussion uh, with a number of uh, career professionals and experts. And we were talking about uh, whether I think it was uh, Dorothy Dalton. I don't know if you had her on your show. I did, yeah. Uh, yeah. She's great. Yeah, she was the one who kind of started it off and say, well, you know, what about having the vaccine, uh, whether you are vaccinated on your resume? Is that yay or Good not? Question, right? Pretty much, yeah. So I thought we'd bring it here for us to bounce that around a little bit and talk about how that may be effective. And the way I thought about it after giving it some thought in a while. I said, no, <laughs> I don't think it's a great idea. But I thought about it is that there's going to be some industries, right? There's going to be some industries where it, I don't know if it belongs on a resume at all, really. But I think each industry is going to ask the question where you're vaccinated. And I, I don't think you'll be able to get to the head of the pile or top of the top of the, you know, the virtual pile, so to speak. Uh, to, you know, whether, you know, you show that you're being vaccinated or whether that you're going to be included or not included uh, for various reasons. But I kind of liken it to having a picture on your resume. Most of us would say no, but there's some industries that yeah. would say, yeah, we want to know. So your thoughts on that, Jack? See, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on the resume either. Yeah. Um, but also, I, there's something... I'm, what I'm concerned about is that we get to a place where if you want to go on a plane, if you want to go, you know, to a restaurant, you want to go to a, a, sh a Broadway show, uh, mm -hmm. a concert, that you're going to have to show something, you know, about did you get, you know, did you get your vaccine? Are you healthy? And on one side, I completely understand why they would want that. And I respect why they would want that. But I counterbalance it by how do you have to worry about too much government interference into your life right. and how it seems to like a little uncomfortable like show me your papers you know you go somewhere like mm -hmm. and you have to pull it out and here's right. my paper and and it seems very big brotherish and it's it i don't know and it's tough because because if you and i ran this restaurant and we're worried if someone comes in with covid and spreads and everyone gets sick you and i would be liable so I can understand from a company perspective, they're a little worried. Well, yeah, I can. First of all, I, I really think uh, vaccines might be subject to some kind of privacy, uh, privacy HIPAA privacy. Yeah. Um, you would, it's almost treating it the same way as the flu in some sense. Um, but I don't think that's going to be. It, there would be more problems if that would happen, um, even though we're talking about the, the vaccine actually being on the resume, I don't know if it's necessarily going to be considered the badge of honor, uh, so to speak. <laughs> kind of weird, uh, right? <laughs> it, it, it is kind of weird. It's got but, but, you know, having said that, we're going to be fighting about this for a long time, about mm -hmm. what does it really mean? Because... First of all, the vaccine was just a COVID vaccine. There's a lot of other diseases yeah. that will be contagious. Having said that, hopefully we learned about, you know, what could possibly spread like wild flock, uh, wildfire here, uh, you know, in the world, um, like a vaccine. Um, you know, COVID came on more like gangrene. It started in one place and then boom, 
it hit everything else and it was it it was terrible and you know i think too there's just too much socialization uh to demonize the people who decide not to get the vaccine for whatever reason and to demonize who do who also got the vaccine as well so it is just it's so tough. I, yeah. I'd rather job seekers stay away from having to bring that up at first. It may be a hot button, uh, you know. Now, I would say if you have done some research and the CEO happens to be a big proponent of getting the vaccine, <laughs> hey, for writing the resume, for the big resume. Well, I would maybe not the resume <laughs> because it would it would be, I mean, would be subject to ultimately to some kind of discriminatory nature. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it is, it, that's going to be a very interesting discussion. They put you, so, so they put you in a cubicle all by yourself if you don't have it. You'd well, be, maybe, you know. or maybe you will want to be in a cubicle by yourself yeah. because you want to avoid any, because nobody else is compliant. Yeah. But, you know, that, that's just very interesting. But it, uh, Jim Peacock uh, uh, comment, thanks to Jim for, for bringing some light or bring another wrinkle discussion. Technically, the vaccine is not approved yet. It has emergency approval. I have concerns about proving vaccination, especially in resume, as most of us did in that in that Twitter discussion, Jim. Um, we were, most of us were all kind of uh, wondering, but there's a lot of depends uh, yeah. uh, on that. Even if still, the again, I see it as a picture on a resume. Uh, in some in a few industries, that'll be plus. How about you have uh, a picture? You don't get vaccine. So <laughs> you, have, you have to do both of them. You have your picture of you getting the shot in the arm. See, yeah. girl, I got it. Yeah, and I had this weird perspective on this because I know a resume writer who dominates their space in dental in dental work. Uh, uh, dental uh, professionals, I, I think it's in Utah, where, you know, these dentists, uh, his clients get jobs all the time. This was a few years ago. His clients got jobs all the time because they had pictures on their resumes. And said, ah, I like this one. Now, you know, we can get into some all shaky ground for all that. Right, all right, all but right. there's what, that. Let me say this. That, what, what kind of people what kind of people were the dental hygienists that had the pictures I, I got a feeling I got uh, well, the trend. well I don't think it's a trend we want to really get into <laughs> I, I, I think I people will start calling correct. us people and, people will call us Neanderthal men if we no, were I'm just, but, I'm just <laughs> wondering like this sounds very suspicious because like I'm not going to be on a picture for a dental hygienist I'm not going to get hired I, but that, I that but that's got yeah, that and at, at one time it was like taboo in our industry right it was like because if you were older than 45 and 50 and you had some gray shoulder and you had this candidate who's young looking and somewhat attractive based on what to consider them before i consider this person but i don't think that's it is it, too funky for me yeah. to even try to to get to it but the other scenario is that there are people who do put their pictures on resumes and they they're in industries where you have to have some kind of personality and you're able to show uh some personality you'll get a good look and i know someone i know someone a friend of mine who's a vp at a, at a bank she had her picture on her resume Hmm. And a big bank. We're talking like Bank of America size yeah. bank. Huh. And 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 that prompted that that uh, that uh, um, SVP to give her a call, and she got the job. So I'm not ready to poo poo it completely, but at the same time, I don't think that there's not enough um, fanfare. You know, if anything's polarizing still. Uh, to put vaccine on your resume at this point. It's one of those things, like, even if you would, like a year later, it'd be cringy. You know what yeah. I mean? A year later, where we, God willing, it's behind us, everything's okay. Yeah. And you look and go, what, what, was, that, what was I thinking? Right. 
You know, I, it's like I, that would seem so weird. What difference? Is it, what difference? What does it have to do with the job? Yeah, that's the ultimate question uh, that would come. You know, crazy, 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 crazy. But uh, anyway, let's move on because we got a bunch of stuff to cover. Uh, let's take a little time talking about. Um, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who is uh, um, he's been interviewing uh, for C-suite jobs uh, and he keeps me in touch over the years uh, about how he's doing. He came across a, a couple of different uh, uh, angles. The latest one was that this company was interested in hiring him and he asked, well, what's the turnover rate? And they told him 100%. I'm going. <laughs> his job or in the company yeah, for, itself? For the, for the company itself's history. He's, he's, he's being vetted for this, for this job. 100%. Uh, 100%. And he asked me what I thought. I said, well, I, I wish her well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I would do. But he's, he's going along in the process of this, but that's, that's a very interesting question. Now, I, I'll preface this: is that if you're if you're if you're a mid level uh, uh, and maybe up, you might ask that question. Uh, but for the rest of us, it's not. But it kind of adds another wrinkle as far as the way a job seeker should look at a company and to find out. If there is a high turnover of that company, or at least in that department, and maybe just to ask the reason why is is that the absolutely. case? Absolutely, Mark. Absolutely, I, I'm I'm with you on that. Um, I think it always makes sense to ask. Let's say you're the interviewer, right? You know, and I'm I'm there. I think it's fair to say, hey, Mark, if you don't mind my asking, what? How did this job become open? You know, so you don't you don't kind of you you, you don't come and judge but you just want to hear what they have to say. Right. You know, um, right. and then it depends what they, you know, what they tell you. I got to tell you this as a recruiter, uh -huh. I'll ask if, you know, to the hiring manager, Hey, you know, why same thing? Like I would say for a candidate, like, why is this job open? Right. And then if they say, you know, uh, we let the person go or whatever, then I'll do a little homework. And, yes. and I want to find out like how, does this happen quite often? And then sometimes you find that this role is like not a hundred percent turnover, but mm -hmm. yeah, you see every year or two, like, or so they, they, they're gone. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a big red flag because it is a big red flag, a big red flag. And you should, and like, I'm glad you brought it up because more I'm thinking about it because that's such a big, important thing that no one talks about too much. And I'm glad you brought right. it up because you could take that job and think it's awesome. And then later on, fine that everybody who's in this seat, you know, was gone within a year or two. And you're like, oh, if I knew that, I, I wouldn't have taken it. Or in case, some cases you where know? people have taken a job and then the boss is gone. And yeah, 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 yeah. Too. I mean, that that within itself is like, that your boss is uh, who hired you, who was training you, or was at least involved and in, cared about you, uh, was your parachute, now it's gone. Now what? Yep. Hey, you know, you know something interesting with that? I've had hiring managers tell me, that, you know, so let's say I'm recruiting, I'm recruiting for you to get somebody. And it mm -hmm. just nothing ends up happening, right? And after a while, it's like, dude, what's going on? Mark? Like what? And someone say, you know what? Or after the fact, let's say it's all done. You'll say, hey, Jack, you know what it is? I was planning on leaving. And the company was making me, you know, hire somebody to, but I was, I didn't want to hire anyone because I knew I was leaving mm -hmm. and I don't want them to think, oh, I'm going to be working for Jack and Mark and we leave and they're going to feel like it was a bait and switch. So they're just dragging their feet. Right. That's kind of weird stuff, but that I can tell you that that's not a rarity. That's how right. I, I've heard and, that on a number of occasions. And a lot of hiring managers are not comfortable giving out that information yeah. if, if somebody should ask. But I tell you what, a good barometer for me and a good barometer is I've been, uh, um, you know, if I shared in job lads and articles, you should be able to ask direct questions and expect a frank answer. Yeah. And that's why you have those kind of questions. Questions, if, if you know, so how do you feel about the company? And yeah. if you see the hiring manager, 
hemming and hawing, you should know that's a danger side and maybe you should go back. But a lot of people are put in this position or put in positions to where, you know, they haven't had an interview in a while and they need a job. So they're, you know, unfortunately they're in that position yeah, and sometimes very, they may have depends. to be, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's like, to me, it's not worth the headache knowing what I know for the yeah. many years I was in the workforce get out of that as soon as you possibly can. But at the same time, some people do have the DNA to tolerate the toxicity that's associated with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but, it's, 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 yeah, it's up to everybody themselves. Like, not, this is gonna sound really weird, but you know, with this whole Harry and Meghan Markle, you know, thing, I, yes. I'm thinking, like yes. I was talking to my, I was talking to my daughter. Well, like, you know what, if you're a princess, all right, maybe you just kind of deal with this because you're a princess. Look at the house you have. <laughs> Look at the life. So, so if maybe they're a little rude to you, you're a princess and you're like you're, you know, you're pretty taken care of and you're really ridiculously wealthy. I don't know. You, you're associated with the wealth. <laughs> You, you, as, you a, as a princess coming <laughs> in, as opposed to being born in, yeah. those are two entirely yeah. different things. One, you're being hired, so to speak, by default in the job, yeah. as opposed yeah. to growing up with the job and yeah. they can't take that with you. Yeah. Now, I, I wonder, would it be different, you know, if you grew up with that? Yeah. But I think we're kind of digressing just a bit. <laughs> well, <'cause, laughs> <It> was, <laughs> So we want to, we want to show that we're up on pop culture, but it shows, it shows that, but like, it really depends on like, okay, like you said, it could be toxic, but if it's an awesome job and you're making a lot of money and this could build your future, all right, do you suffer through it for a certain amount of time and then either it gets better or now you, you've learned a lot and you could use that and then go somewhere else. So, right. yeah. Well, you know, if it, it just uh, just imagine if you were drafted to a team mm -hmm. and you are Muggsy Boats and everybody's the height of uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, mm -hmm. would you, you're going to always feel some kind of way about it. Yeah. But if you but if you were on the team before all those guys came on, then mm -hmm. it's a whole lot different dynamic. They're on your team now yeah. because you they kept you around and they drafted everybody else to play play around you to make the whole team better so really it's, it's a totally different dynamic but having to the head back to where we were mm -hmm. uh, you know this one thing is that as a job seeker uh, you've got to be in your career in, in control of your career in such a way is where no is going to be useful intel not where the boundaries are drawn I mean, at least you know where the boundary is drawn, but at least the no isn't, you know, something that you go, well, doggone, then I just can't, I have no other choice but to fall in line as opposed to no. So, okay, I understand where that might be. And you might be able to either use that to dig deeper, to maybe po possibly find yourself useful to the company, or you might find that, oh, no. We're not going to do that because I just came from that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it, there's so much on the line, but, you know, yeah, it it's goes back to just being able to ask really good questions um, to find right. out, to understand where the boundaries are and where, it, or, uh, and maybe another way to find out where the, uh, where the uh, actual landmines actually yeah. lie. Well, if you, if you do a LinkedIn search, so let's say, I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing the ABC widget company. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I put in, you know, I'm trying to think if there's a way through LinkedIn, can you see when, when you filter it, people who are no longer working there, you know, but they come up in the search and that can maybe make you think, wait a minute, I'm seeing a whole lot of people who've, who've moved on in the last year or so. And that could be a good way of kind of telling. You can possibly... I'm just thinking off the top of my head, yeah. you can possibly use the word former somewhere in that title. I've never tried people, that. It, huh. it, it, it's a hunch is I have yeah, no yeah, idea, yeah. but, yeah. but you know, all words are, are, are keywords. So use the word former or X something or X the company or go and even 
it was even worse. Go to the company page if, it paid, if, the, if the LinkedIn has a company, if that company has a LinkedIn page, and go and see if any of those employees are still on the page, and just to see. Uh, and you could do this, you can go and check the employees and you could check to see how long they've been there uh, or how long they've been away from there because they may not have taken them off, off the roll on the LinkedIn page because a lot of times companies neglect their LinkedIn page. They put it there at first and people put themselves because they got the job, but they don't necessarily take them out, to take themselves out because they've gotten job. And now maybe it's kind of reverse engineering the, yeah. the search function in that kind of way, but uh, that's a possible way of doing it as well. But maybe former X go to the page yeah. just to see. And if you want to check it incognito, there's a little trick you could do. You could hover over their name where the link is to their page and you can right click if you're using a mouse or you know use the click functions uh, as a right click, or if you have a Mac, and it'll have a drop down, you know, it'll say see an in incognito window. That means that you can see that person's profile a lot of the times, not all the time. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> it will go to the person's page in the incognito. So that way your name is not on it when they look at it. It will just say someone from X, Y, and Z looked at it, but your, your, but your, uh, <laughs> your profile yeah. isn't you know, looked at along with it, associated with it. And you can check to see where that person's been or see what their status is. And sometimes yeah. people don't always announce that they are, that they left the company right yeah. away, but there's clues. Yeah, that's you don't, right, you, you don't update it and, it's, and it still shows that you're there. People, you right, off. people keep it yeah. on there. If they've been, especially if they've been laid off, they'll yeah. keep it on for another oh, yes. 30 days that's or so. Yes, uh, so, so. Yeah, I've, heard, you've noticed that too, days. right? Like yeah. a lot yeah. more people leave it on. They'll leave it on yeah. at least till the next gig or until it goes too long that they have to kind of take it off because yeah. be you know what Mark something else too which is misleading I think with 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 uh, people leaving I've mm. definitely seen this happen so, so often you have a company something something you know something happens right and mm. then people some key people leave then everybody gets spooked about like why did they leave why did Jack leave why did Mark leave and then they start leaving even though they don't know why everyone else did. And then you see a lot of turnover, but it it's almost not really warranted. It's just like, it's people get scared. Like, I'm, well, if Mark left and Jack left, something's up, I'm going to leave too. And it becomes a snowball effect. So it makes it well, look way worse than it really is. I give people a little bit more credit for at least being able to read the tea leaves. Uh, it, and, you know, if it's not feeling good and people leave, then I think people will have agreed. Yeah, you have to have a little something there, right? Uh, right. But, uh, right. but but it could be that, it, yeah. it, that I've seen it where people are in a hot industry. Yeah. And I remember in the early days, you know, right around or a little bit after the tech boom all happened, and you know, a lot of stuff fell apart in the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. uh, people will still going to these yeah. jobs. Uh, and it was just, it was just hot. It was a hot industry. Uh, so, you know, I either stay where I'm at, where I, yeah. maybe I am one of the few, but this company is willing to pay me 40% more than what I make now. That makes sense. Sure. Right, right. So you're leaving so, for good reasons, not for right. bad. So you're, right. But, yeah. you know, having said that, there are times when, you know, there are layoffs for no inexplicable reason that, that mm -hmm. the company has not decided to do bulge you know or that do? maybe think about this i mean you yeah. have the opposite too where yeah. what if you go to a place and you're there and you have people who have been entrenched there for years and they're not moving right and it's just the opposite like do you take a job where jack and mark have been there 20 years they're not going anywhere and then how am i ever going to kind of rise in the organization yeah, and that comes along with the good with the good intel. Yeah. Uh, for sure, uh, these days you don't want to just talk to 
a, a couple of people within a company, you want to try to have a few conversations, including people who may have even left that position and find out why they left, or even look at what the competition is doing in the, in the same in the same industry, but a different company and maybe the same position and to see what they see. And those are very two very unique experiences. So sometimes it, they do add up uh, in some kind of way, but definitely dig deeper for the intel and look for the better questions to ask uh, if you're a job seeker. But all in all, um, definitely, you, you know, the temperature should tell you everything you need to know. How great would be if a company, if you had like a bill of rights for these companies where they would say, okay, you have to disclose, here's the amount of turnover, you know, here's this, that. So when you're a job seeker, you can go in and really have the truth about like, what's, what's the deal? Like, is there advancement? What percentage of people get promotion? What percent of people stay more than a year or three years? Imagine yeah. that. Yeah, well, you know, we, we experience uh, as history has shown that has um, there are people who kept it private and kept the, the dealings private. I mean, think Bear Stearns. Bear mm-hmm. Stearns kind of all of a sudden went away <laughs> I mean, uh, because of the financial crumbling of Wall Street uh, back in what, 2006, 2007? Um, I mean, you know, it, it has happened. Um, the companies that seem to be more forward thinking are much more transparent, especially if there are they have people uh, if it's publicly uh, on the record as you know something that will, people can invest in, like the Microsofts and the Apples and what have you. So the advantage, it depends. Yeah. So we had a guy. Yeah. We had a guy into having his last interview with Bear Stearns, right? And they're ready to make, I think they actually made him an offer. I think it was with, with Mike Tuller. And, <laughs> and they closed and, and we're like, you know, that sucks, you know? Yeah, that, that sucked. And, it, but people, a lot of people know, hospitals close that way sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, or different businesses may close if they have to be compliant with some mm-hmm. regulation in some kind of way, uh, you know, and they're not, and they're consistently non-compliant, uh, that business can't be closed, um, you know. So, you know, hospitals are, are subject to that as well as many different mm-hmm. type of entities. So, you know, like I said, if, if job seekers are doing their research, uh, they can find out a lot of things. And maybe you're not, is more, the, the sweet spot is more, in between the lines is than it is black or white. Absolutely. So, yeah. So let's move on. Um, which kind of brings it, it does kind of bring it along the same line. Uh, you know, values is a big, uh, big deal and maybe bigger deal now than we ever had. Uh, and you, I know you've had these discussions with CEOs. Uh, I've had a couple that I've had discussions with and I've had um, uh, other uh, colleagues that said they've had discussions with CEOs uh, that they really start to re-examine what's important to them uh, in this, in the, you know, during COVID, that they're home and that they're seeing the lay of the land and the culture of the family and they're going, I need to reevaluate how I've been going about it because I'm used to being away from home 15 you know, plus hours a day. So, uh, but I think everybody's kind of reevaluating mm-hmm. their values and what it means to them. Uh, so the next career. So, um, but is it going to be realistic with all the confusion that's about to happen here? And I, I, I do think even though there's going to boom, there's going to be a boom, there's going to be some confusion. Um, should values be a driving force behind uh, your career choices? And is it fair, is it fair game that uh, that even companies would hire you depending upon uh, what they sense your values may be. Yeah, so you know, when you say value, I guess there are two things. Value is meaning that maybe I'm going to take a job because I, I find more meaning and purpose in it, but then also is it because the company promotes certain social and political issues? Are you talking about 
Is that that could it could that? be both. It could yeah. be both. I mean, think about the think about the climate that we're we've been in the last really the, the last twelve years. Uh, in, in fact, that we find that politics is near and dear to a lot of folks' heart, mm -hmm. and they live and die by them. I mean, as soon as they as soon as they you know walk the driveway and get on their computers from home. Uh, or they've already been on Facebook uh, on the way home, uh, that, uh, you know, how they're feeling is politically driven. So, yeah, that would be included. Um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 I don't know. I can see some of that's going to change some because you can't avoid, uh, you can't avoid politics almost. You can, tell really people not to, you can tell people not to discuss it at, at work, but being that people are going to be, at home <laughs> changes yeah. that dynamic now. Well, it's interesting because that's something with a lot of companies are dealing with now, um, where you have a lot of people, and I notice it's across all, all ages, but particularly I notice a lot with the Gen Zs, um, younger folks, that it's really important that they work at a company that shares the same kind of mission, the same kind of values, the same kind of you know supporting social issues, um, uh, you, you know, across the board. But then you have other companies like Coinbase. They were saying that, hey, we're a, a political neutral company that we're not going to talk politics. We're not going to go into anything. And even the, the CEO, this guy Armstrong, took the next step and said, hey, if you want to do it, this is not the punk company for you. No hard feelings. We'll give you a severance package and you can go. And, and just drew the line. With Facebook and Google, it got their message boards blew up. It got so crazy. They had to say, wait a minute, we got, you got, we got to put a lot of guardrails on it because it's just getting too toxic and, and it's really getting people, you know, at each other's throats. So yeah, a lot of them are, are kind of having to deal with like, how do we, how do we navigate it? How do we, because there are a lot of people who do feel when they work for a company, they want to be proud because they stand for something. But then for everyone who feels they stand for X, someone wants Y. So it's, it's, it is getting really interesting how this is going to play out. Yeah, but Facebook is kind of a company that's, that they're their own gatekeeper. Um, and some of it's double talk. You say, well, we can't really talk about it, but we're going to make sure that our users don't talk about it. Kind of ironic, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So, so how can you, you know, it, 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 you're policing yourself. Yeah. How can that be? Is that interesting? Yeah, that's going to be, that's a, that's why some things are, you know, you can't work the way you want it. They want to, you know, they want to eat the cake and have it too. It's not going to work in the long term, I don't think. But besides, aside from that, I think people are are willing if if they have the more you have access to th something, um, the more I think it will become less significant in your work. Um, you know, when people are home. Um, you know, they don't have to worry about going out somewhere for food for the most part. They have food at home or they can order to have, have food to come to them, depending upon how they're working. Uh, if you're working by project, then of course you have a little bit more freedom. If you're working uh, for the hour and you being by the phone is going to matter more, then, you know, it, it could possibly be... A, a, you know, a little bit different on how you approach that. But basically your home is going to be your work culture. Um, and uh, even though, yes, to some degree, the people you work with is also that work culture, there's a little bit more control on how much you can cut that off now. So I think as you give people what they want, it becomes normalized, uh, then maybe it won't be as intense. At least I think I'd like to see that go yeah. that way. I'm not yeah. sure, it, it, you know, according to how people would behave at home, maybe they might feel, uh, you know, they'll feel empowered to have this, but I don't think they'll, people will want to approach it if they're away from work and they don't like that kind of jargon, um, perhaps it, then they'll be over it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I think for some people, it's it's really important you know kind of the culture you know what they stand for others not so much I, and i also wonder if this whole like toxic political environment maybe just peters off 
you know, where I'm hoping that's going to be the case. After I hope, I hope, I hope right? by this time next year, along with getting a little normalized, um, of course, there's going to always be something. You always have like a little undercard of, you know. But at least it won't be if I should mention somebody's name, yeah. all of a sudden the fists start to go up. Yeah. Uh, that's something that we've seen over the past few years. That it's, 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 it's exhausting. How, right. How nice would it be like, it's all right, you can agree to disagree. And, okay, whatever. That's your cool. opinion. It's mine. Cool. Fine. It, it's out there. It's out there. And, you know, there's no consequences in feeling either yeah. way. But, you know, I think people's values now, I think, are going to come more into play because every decision that you're going to make on your career, whether it's going to be business travel or more hours or something's going to be driven by these other factors that are going on in your home and not just the kids, but I'm having the roof done today. I'm having a new room put in today, or we need to move out of our apartment today. And, or I just don't, you know, I'm not finding enough time to do X, Y, and Z with my kids. And even though you're working, you're expected to still work X amount of hours, whatever that culture is. And if you're if you have a hard start time from nine to five, then that's really effective because sometimes those activities or those changes or those uh, branches that extend to elsewhere in your life, they're going to matter now. Yeah. So you know, ultimately, you know, uh, I think values have always been a play, and I think as you get older, it really does matter. Uh, a whole lot more because you've grown in responsibilities uh, as opposed to when you're younger um, there are young people who are taking on uh, you know are taking on more responsibility I think they they actually almost have to these days uh, uh, because of the way that we live now yeah. it's gonna be interesting even, even like it's so up in the air too like how is this going to play out is it going to be 70% remote, 30% in the office, 50, 50. Um, it, it's, it's still going to be, because there's really no definitive way as, well, as it looks gonna as be, now. They, we're going to hear about companies and employees saying that, no, no, we don't want to go back. Yeah. Uh, so what office. are you going to do? Like they're scared to go back. Even, even after they get vaccinated, everything, it's understandable that people could feel that way. It's going to be interesting to see how that all shakes out. I, I, I think we're going to see people actually say, no, we don't want to go. And there'll be, it's not going to be just, you know, hundreds of them or a few of them. There's going to be thousands of them if they're global companies. Uh, and I think some of the global companies have already decided that you, you could stay home. Uh, like Microsoft, they said, stay home. Uh, there's some other companies that have said, you could, you could stay home forever. And I, I don't know if they're how they'll you know manage their big campuses and what have you. Uh, that remains to be seen. Yeah. Uh, I imagine that there's some way to lease them out to other companies that may want to have them come, or to or, or to create a different type of uh, business model uh, to use that space, or get rid of the space altogether, which would save the company perhaps millions of dollars if they're that large. But that's a kind of a wait and see. Yeah. This would be one of the predictions. Yeah, yeah. If you want and, predictions to yeah. see what how it's going to play out, and if you want to predict, use this thread. Yeah. Uh, feel free to put it to us, or if you feel like you want to be private, you could DM yeah. us. It's okay, right? Uh, let's let's move on. This is very interesting, and this is a topic that I think I just ran across in an article about follow up. Uh, something that a lot of job seekers do not do. Uh, in their going about. Um, I think even Andrew Seaman had a segment about follow-up last week on his show uh, was another reason why I wanted to kind of bring that up because I think it's an important issue. And I think for as a recruiter yourself, a seasoned recruiter, you kind of follow-up kind of uh, kind of is is uh, the bread and water of your job in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's So yeah. I, I, I'd love to hear your perspective on it. Yeah, I mean, for let's say for me, I have to follow up to see what's going on. Right. And in this time of like ghosting and no feedback, it's hard because a lot of times the company is not that receptive, 
which is rough because then you have the job seeker saying, Jack, you know, what's up, what's going on? And then you're in this awkward spot. Like, I don't know. <laughs> They're not telling me. And you feel like an idiot. So I'm being very honest. You feel, I feel like an idiot where it's a very reasonable question from the job seeker. Hey, Jack, what kind of feedback? What did they say? Do they like me? Do they not like me? Am I going for another interview? And I have to be like, I literally don't know because they're not getting back. And that's a really tough thing. And then, you know, so the same advice I would give to a job seeker, I give to myself, I'm like, okay, I got to politely keep persisting to get and elicit that feedback because mm -hmm. how else can I help, you know, in terms of the job search and how can I get more candidates? Because then if, if I don't get any feedback from people, I can't keep recruiting for it because I don't want to send people in, don't hear anything because then it gives me a black eye, you know, it's a bad reputation for me. And then also you got to start wondering, am I just spinning my wheels? What kind of, like, what kind of organization are they doing? So right. following up, it's, it's one of those things that sounds easy, but in, 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 an, in an era where just ghosting is the norm, you're, you're, you, you got to be a little pushy. And then yeah. I think what happens for, for whether a job seeker or like someone like myself, who is a recruiter who has to follow up on both sides, you just have to kind of keep at it and keep trying and trying. And hopefully eventually you're, you're able to extract, you know, the, the necessary information that you need to either give to the candidate or give to the client. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not easy. I got to tell you, it's not like it used to be. It used to be like, it was just normal. Of course, you know, the company will give you the feedback. They'll give you a follow-up, uh, the candidate on all levels. Now it's like pulling teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I, I just, there's a couple of things I think about it. One is that um, I think a lot of times uh, the job seekers who are, who are too sentimental about one job, because again, we get in the scenarios, many yeah. times we see people in dire straits mm -hmm. and they need that particular job. Yeah. And the only follow-up that they would do is, is call. There are times when many of them don't even do that much. They're just waiting on somebody to, to choose them instead of moving on and to find other companies. And maybe they'll get back to you in a certain amount of time. And just assuming that, let's say it's been two or three weeks now, you've had, you were told this was the final interview and that they'll make a decision in a few days. A few days turns into a week, then turns into a couple of weeks. And perhaps you did some due diligence as far as calling, then, you know, to wait that third week is, is kind of costly to the job seeker because then you're getting into, well, you know, they're not interested, then I got to move on. Hopefully by then you've, you've moved on at the day after they told you yeah. that this is the final interview because you still want to get, you still want to get people, uh, you still want to get companies to, uh, that get the best offer. You're not just looking for the first one. You want to get the best company. And the only way you do that is be able to compile a, a number of choices, but you can't wait on one uh, particular uh, call or one particular follow-up. If they're not calling and after you've tried to call, uh, then unfortunately you, you have no choice. And for a lot of people that get stuck in the matrix to where now they got to kind of start over with a, with a good part of the job search is that now they got to find new companies yeah. when they should have been doing that the whole way. It happens a lot. It happens all the time. You fall in love with that job and, and you put all your eggs in one basket and to the person's detriment, because if it doesn't yeah. turn out, as you pointed out, they have to start all over again. It does make sense to kind of spread it around and you know, try to kind of have a bunch of things in the works if possible. Yeah, yeah, and, and you and, and like I said, you gotta you know be careful where you put your emotions and mm -hmm. your hope in. Uh, to put your hope in one single company, and I know it's hard. You can you could have tried at, yeah. at talking to a number of companies, but there's just one who possibly is, at least is giving you a chance to meet with them. It's hard, but still you need to unattach yourself. Uh, but even though having said that, the follow-up portion at the beginning of the stages is just as important as the yeah. end. Well, let, you, let me give you, let, I'll give you a real life follow-up because it just happened. Okay. So I have this guy who is going for a senior level role and really mm -hmm. excited about it, meets the person, great. 
don't hear back, don't hear back. So I'm kind of contacting, you know, the, uh, you know, the hiring person and don't hear back. Finally hear back. Okay. Liked him, et cetera. But what, you know, what's the next step? Not hearing the next step. <laughs> they keep following up. Right. Then I finally, and then the, the, the candidate rightfully is asking me what's going on. I'm like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. And I, and then you're in an awkward spot because you don't want to, because it's awkward because you, because if you, you don't know, you don't want to say, no, they're not interested because maybe they are. And you don't want to say they are interested because you're not sure. So it's really awkward. And, and you could sense the frustration from a job seeker. So fast forward, you know, I finally find out from the hiring manager, they had somebody else in mind and talking about like falling in love and just tracking one thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. hiring managers do that too. Instead of mm. keeping the search going with, let's say, three or four good people who either any of them can really get the job, they just kind of go with one and go down that path. And this it's, it's the opposite side of what you were talking about. And that's a dangerous game because what happened yeah. in this instance, so he's going down that path with another person and evidently it didn't turn out. Turn, 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 you know, it didn't turn out well for that candidate. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. So then I, I, and, and I'm still getting in touch with the hiring manager to see what's going on. And then you he said, oh, Jack, here's what happened. Yeah, we've been making an offer to somebody that didn't pan out. So yeah, we want to bring back that other person. And now they actually today, he's going in for a face to, he's going to face to face interview. I hope it goes well. But yeah, on their end, instead, he could have brought this person back along instead of waiting, because that guy could have right. easily said, you know what, screw you. You know, you kept me waiting. I'm, I'm not going to bother now because you guys right. are, you know what I mean? You kind of blew me off. And or feel like, oh, okay. That person didn't take it, so I'm second place, and then just not feel comfortable about it. Whereas you would be better off as the person who's doing the hiring, you know, kind of keep the whole process with a few people, so you're not putting on that side all your eggs in one basket. Um, right, and it goes both ways. So, it's really interesting to see that. So you, as a recruiter, you're caught in a chasm in the sense that if, if a, you know if the candidate is ready. But the company is not ready. So uncomfortable, bro. I'm telling you, it's one of those things <laughs> where, because, because like, I, I, they'll say I'm, I'm with you talking. That's how I am with the candidates. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I don't put on any right. airs or any pretense. I'm very, just, just like this. And so think about it. If you're telling me, imagine this, Jack, you're, you're telling me like, okay, am I going to get the offer or not? And I don't know. It's very uncomfortable because mm -hmm. then you're thinking, Bullshit. <laughs> you know I mean, how can you yeah. not know, Jack? Come on, you got to know. You're not telling me. How can you not know if I'm getting an offer? Or how do you not know? I'm like, I don't. They're not telling me. And it's a very, it's it's really uncomfortable. It, and this is really only the last, I don't know, four or five ish years, whatever, where mm -hmm. it never really was. If it happened in the past, it was like a one off, but now it's right. been so common. And then same thing happens also with candidates. They disappear and the company would be like, okay. You know, you know, where's where's Jane? And like, I don't know. What, what, like, what do you? How do you not know, Jack? I don't know. She's not getting back to me. How come she's not getting back to me? And then you feel like a complete loser because she's mm -hmm. not getting back. Right, right. Well, you know, probably in your industry, mm -hmm. they're you know, they're not a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. They're you know, it's a very, it's a very you know, straight line. It's very you yeah. Know, that the bridge is very narrow. And yeah. you don't have a whole lot. You're not going to have hundreds of candidates. Exactly that fit. Yeah, you're going to have very yeah. few. As opposed to opposite, I'm interested in the experience of those who who have hundreds and dwindle down. Yet they still experience both sides of, yeah. of, of the deal. So that's very interesting. But I guess it helps to have that referral ultimately, who can maybe do a temperature check. Yeah, because uh, then you have an insider who's championing. Yeah, yeah. So if you have, so let's take the example I gave, right? Where the hiring manager is not really getting back. If you have an insider who's like, what's up? What's going on? And he's advocating for the job seeker. They may tell that person a little bit more information. So yeah, see that it's, it's yeah, you got, that's why for, for people looking, you just, it's not easy. And you got to find ways to get that information out. Yeah, and, you got to find ways to hack easy. it. And that's why it probably it helps to have not just the one person, but to have several people uh, who can take the temperature. That's the take best. The temperature for you. Yeah, it's the best. the best. And 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 sometimes things happen in the middle. Like I remember when I worked for the American Bar Association and we were doing hiring, then all of a sudden there was a department that laid off like everyone. 
Mm-hmm. And then, so it didn't affect your department, but because of the reaction, because there was a chain reaction yeah. throughout the company, hiring just stopped. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, it, it just, everybody folded. So you had to tell people, say, well, there was a hiring freeze. Wait a second. I was just in, and people don't understand. Some yeah. of it has nothing to do with anything, yeah, yeah. but the reaction is we're going to hold off a wait because there might be other departments that get, get yeah. laid off. And you know what it is, Mark? People don't communicate as much that anymore. So no. then you're left in the dark. You know, like if, if they would say, you know, send out an email to everybody who interviewed, I'm really sorry. Here's what happened. Maybe they don't even have to say we had a mass leave. You, you know, they want to, they don't want to come across that way. But hey, mm-hmm. we're just doing some things internally. So it'll take a little bit longer. Apologize for the delay. You know, as soon as we know, we'll get you. But they don't do it. And then, you know, what I think happens too is that human nature is such, if you don't get back, Think of it like in a personal relationship, you don't get back to someone and then time goes on, you don't get back to them. And then now it's that awkward. All right. Now it's really weird if I get back to that other person. So you're like, right. all right. And you don't do anything, which is wrong. Right. But, it, yeah. but it plays out that way. Yeah. And, it, you know, no telling what uh, the, the candidate always, you know, you and I have told people a, a lot of the similar things, probably not everything. But one of the things is, you know, in this day and age, the more control you are of your career, the more options you have. And it, it's momentary. You can move on with just one decision instead of having to dig and to ask a whole bunch of people or wait for somebody to give you the call. If somebody's not getting you the call, they, it's easy to go to your computer and start or at least continue on doing what you've been doing, networking, uh, you know, a- applying, whatever that means are, of course, getting referrals to other companies, then you have leverage. And the more you work yourself into the leverage, the better your your choices are going to be ultimately for yourself. I agree. You have have so therefore, you, you can get into having having something that's driven on the values that people don't go to who don't like a a workplace because uh, they, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, and it could be family, it could be uh, the environment, it could be something the CEO did. um, And sometimes that could cause a great chain of reaction if his CEO isn't who you thought he was. Uh, So, you know, all those things is you want to be in control some kind of way. Don't wait for the onesies. Don't be desperate if you can possibly help it. Yeah, that's it. I love that. I think that's probably the best advice ever. It's just you got to be in control of it. And yeah. the more things you have, the, the more confident you're going to be because you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. And then you have a whole bunch of different things to work on. Yeah. 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 I, I really think that is to get to that point takes a lot of work. And very few job seekers are willing to put that kind of work into it uh, beforehand. We have about a couple of minutes left. Uh, What uh, podcasts or or things you got coming up, Jack? What do I? um, I don't know. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow I do this guy uh, uh, Vincent Van, based on his last name, has uh, he uh, has Vitan, which is kind of this group and. I'll talk, okay. I, I'll come in and I'll talk about like what's going on with the job market and things like that. But then mm-hmm. I don't know who I have, who have up on some of the LinkedIn lives. Um, okay. And also I got to figure out like what, I, I got to kind of figure out another bunch of stuff I'm going to write for Forbes. So I'm open for ideas. Okay. So, All right. All right. I kind of think uh, about what's, what's the next kind of yeah. stuff. And then, and then yeah. the recruiting, which is, it's pick it up, which is nice. But all That's the things nice. I'm talking about is it's 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 a weird it's a weird dynamic, Time. and people you know what and you can't blame them because a lot of people if you're working, you're you're still like hey let me just stay put because I'm a little afraid of what's happening out there, yeah. And the companies instead of being more open minded are still we want exactly what we want, so it's right. still a weird vibe. Right. Right. Well. Uh, yeah, I can, I can understand your industry is going to be disrupted a couple of times over uh, <laughs> the next coming months, depending upon the volume that you're going to get in. Yeah, and uh, if we circle back to what they were saying at the beginning of a conversation, if it's a boom, then that should be awesome. That should be great right, for everybody. Right. I want to give a quick shout out to Brad Minton for the Your Career GPS show that I was just on the podcast 
also, I was just on with Sonia Ball, uh, like you were the prior Friday, it was this past Friday, uh, great show. We did an hour and a half. Wow, lots, it's of, different. Wow. lots of questions, uh, lots of different types of questions. Great show. Uh, Brad and Cassie did a great job with your uh, career GPS. Uh, shout out to them. Uh, got a few others that are coming down the pike. Uh, I'll leave as a mystery as they begin mm -hmm. to uh, uh, process. Everybody does something different. But in the meantime, check back with us next Wednesday on Job Seeker Nation. We'll be here at 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you have mm -hmm. questions or if you have inquiries, contact us through our timelines. Put a note in the thread about your predictions or when things are going to open. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Keep interacting with us. We'll see you guys next week. Excellent. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Take care, Mark. Right. I'm going to do the